you hear me? Good afternoon. And it's great to be with you. And welcome to everyone who's listening online as well. Well, for those who were here last week, we witnessed an incredible time. Three baptisms of Pierre, Emily, and Sue. And hopefully behind me is a picture of just before we had a baptism, before they got into the water, Lynn Harvey took this photo of Jesus in the pool. So that's amazing, that's the same last window reflecting into the pool. And it's always like Jesus saying, I go before you. So that was really special. So Friday is going to be starting a new sermon series this week on Broken by Sin and Antidote Hope. And we'll all be studying that in our small groups. And Hilda and Paul are going to be starting a new group, and there's two of you here today, they're going to be starting that. There's still space, so if you would like to join a small group, there's lots of space here, and I'd be really encouraged if you join that group. That's going to be on Wednesday evening. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you teach us in this life. Thank you how we support and love each other. Teach us more, Lord. Teach us more of your love and what it means to be more like Christ. We pray now, Lord, for everyone here and online, that in the next hour we would hear you clearly and be transformed by your great love. Thank you, Lord, as we journey, you journey with us. Please stay near to us. In Hebrews it says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And before we say a prayer together, Follow the death of Prince Philip. I just want to, um, we've got Dan, Dan, if you wait for us. Dan sat there in front of you, and four years ago today, he had a serious motorbike accident, which left him with a few injuries, isn't it, Dan? Um, so he wanted to be with us here today, just to thank God that he is with us here today. So if we could just stretch out your hand to Dan. Lord God, we just thank you for Dan. We thank you, Lord, that you've kept him safe with his mum, Jane. And we're so thankful, Lord, you brought him to our family at St. Margaret's. And it's just great, Lord, to see him grow in you, grow in faith, done the alpha courses and being with us now, Lord. And yeah, I just pray, Lord, complete healing as time goes on. In Jesus' name, Amen. So we're going to now read a prayer together following the death of Prince Philip. And Andrew's going to come up from it. So we can do this together. We give thanks to the life of Prince Philip, for his love for our country, and for his devotion to Jesus. We entrust him now to your love and to mercy, through our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Merciful God, we bless the Lord of the Lord, the special and majesty of the Queen, and all members of the Lord. May they know the hope of your promises and the comfort of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, we give thanks for the life of the Spirit, founder of the Duke of Edinburgh's awards. We remember his vision and imagination, his interest in young people and his support for them. Inspire us with the same commitment to serve friend, neighbour, Stranger alike. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Okay, we're going to have a worship now, so we can have a band come forward.
recent plan. At the start of lockdown, I wrote a book. He wrote a book on his story, his story, his struggle, and it's this book here. And it's called Broken by Fear and Giving Hope. And I would encourage you to get it. It's not very big, and it's his story of how he has got through and giving hope through some really, really big struggles. And throughout this series, during the small groups, during the week, you're going to be going a bit deeper into the teaching on Sunday, but also it's going to be developed into an app. So if you've got the new version Bible app, you can um, download that. And if you go to Broken by Fear, Anchored in Hope, there's a seven day kind of um, series you can do. If you do it one, one week at a time, so you, you don't jump ahead. So you do, you're do doing your small groups next week, but also you can study it during the week by yourself. So I feel really, really excited about this new series. So shall we, let me just pray for us as we start. So I pray, Jesus, that you are with us. I pray by your Holy Spirit you to come and speak to us today. Open our hearts and our minds to hear you. Just this week, I do the Bible in one year, the Weekly Jungle, the 10 minutes um, express version, and it's really good. And I was struck by one thing that he said this week. He said he saw an illustration, and they were two walking boots. And that really struck me. And he said one foot, one boot was called trust, and one was obey. The trust and obey. And he described them as the right and left foot of a Christian journey, to trust and to obey. And trust and obey is a good summary of the Christian life. There's a need for us all to put on our boots of trust and obey, to step out into our fears, trusting in God and obey, obeying God as we walk this Christian journey. And Jackie Pullinger, she says this, God wants us to have soft hearts and hard feet. So will you journey with us over the next seven weeks, putting on your boots of trust and obey? And I was really struck by Psalm 23. I just want to read a few verses. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path. For his name's sake, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. With my rod and my staff, they comfort me. And that's my hope, is that over the next seven weeks, we will put on these boots. We will put them on daily, of trust and obey, as we step into all God has for us. So today, I want to start this series talking to you about fear. And fear is something that is mentioned in the Bible actually quite a lot of times. It's really, really important. It's something that we all face. Something that isn't new. Fear, fear not, is mentioned in the Bible 365 times. Whatever difficulties you may be facing, whatever fears you have right now, Know that God loves you. Know that God is with you by his Holy Spirit. And in that psalm that Kelly read, Psalm 142, David, it seems that he's hiding. He's crying out to God. He's in a cave, in a cave of despair. And we see that in 1 Samuel 22. David left a place called Gath and escaped 
to the cave of Adnil, Adnil, I think that's the pronounced that one, eh? When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to be with him. He was in a cave. And I wonder, I wonder what David, what drove David to this. Uh, he, he was astonishingly successful, battle hardened. He was a warrior who had earned the respect of people. He finds himself in a dark cave. How would he come to lay, to, to lay so low that he would declare in this psalm, listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. You know, David's cry seems to echo of the walls of this cave into the darkness that surrounded him. You know, I've never been in a cave. I'm not sure if anyone here has been in a cave. But I can imagine caves are dark. Caves are cold. There's no light. There probably isn't much comfort. They're lonely places that deny any hope and leave you numb. And Samuel tells us of this location that David's um, cave was near the town of Adnan. Adnan. But the reality is, for us, that our cave can be anywhere. Our cave can be anywhere. We don't need to go to a mountainside to be trapped in a cave of despair, in a cave of fear. We could be here lonely in a crowd, sitting amongst a church family, but it still feels like we're trapped in this cave of fear and despair. It could be that you're busy at work, you're winning people for Christ, but it, it feels like you're lonely, you're in this cave. Maybe you've got a successful career. You've climbed the ladder, but you're still in this cave. In this cave of fear and despair. And for me, I just want to be honest, this week I found myself being gripped with fear. Trapped in this cave, in this, not a cave, but a virtual cave. And I found myself in this place of real despair, when I opened an email, and it filled me, to be quite honest, with fear, absolute fear. You know, but it filled me with that much fear, it took me three hours to, to pluck up the courage and open that email. I felt trapped by that fear. I had to put on my trust, my boots. And I had to obey God and open that email. I felt like David in verse 6. Listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. Rescue me from, from those who pursue me. They are too strong for me. Set me free from my prison. I felt trapped. And I'm just being honest and vulnerable. I found myself repeating um, encouraging scriptures that, that speak life into me, that told me to fear not, to not to worry, told me that perfect love casts out all fear, but I was trapped. It took courage, it took energy for me to open that email. That cave for me felt like an exhausting place. And if I'm honest, I was shocked by how fearful I felt. And it was so surprising to me how flipping exhausting fear is. How draining it is. Fear exhausts us mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And maybe you're here today, maybe you can relate to what I am saying. It really surprised me. But we can take great comfort 
from Jesus, when we look at Jesus. You know, Jesus felt the kind of fear that I felt. He feels the kind of fear that you go through. We know when he's in that garden, the garden of Gethsemane. We know he acknowledged sadness. His soul was overwhelmed to the point of sorrow. He sank to his knees. Father, he said, as a father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not your will. Yet not my will, but your will. This was no casual prayer. This came from a place of fear, a place of vulnerability. Jesus was distraught. He fell to the ground. He prayed like he never prayed before. If we need to learn from Jesus, don't we? It's okay not to be okay. It's okay to be gripped by fear. And I feel sometimes as Christians, we can too easily reduce the Christian life to be either afraid or not afraid. As though we can be one, but not the both, not the other, not both. Look, it's possible to be scared, isn't it? And excited at the same time. It's possible to experience hope and despair at the same time. At the same time, for me, it was possible for me to be gripped with fear, but also anchored in hope. It's possible for us to cry out to the heavens, why have you abandoned me? At the same time, to proclaim, God, you are great, and I will praise you. And we see David cry out to God in this psalm. Verses 1 to 4, 4. I cry aloud to the Lord, I lift my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out before him my complaint. Before him I tell my trouble. When my spirit grows, grows faint within me, it is, it is you who watch over my way in the path where I walk. People have hidden a snare for me. Look and see, there is no one, there is no one at my right hand. No one is concerned for me. I have no refuge. refuge. No one cares for my life. I think every one of us can relate to that honest and raw psalm. Like all of the psalms are honest. They come from a place of despair. For me, this week, it took courage to put on these boots. I have to say that. Of obey and trust. It took courage. Opening that email was the first part of facing that fear. The real challenge for me, the real challenge for us, is when we are able to acknowledge our fears in the presence of God. But most importantly, for people, to friends that we trust, to friends who love us. And for me this week, we invited over to somebody's house for dinner. And for me being able to share, be really honest with my fears. And over, di over dinner, they showed me love. They showed me a bright, shining, glorious presence of hope that never fails, that never gives up. Even when I had given up on myself, I was able to put these boots on of trust and obey and continue to walk. It felt like Psalm 23. I put on the boots and trust and I walked through the darkest valley. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. My God is with me. My your God is with you. Your rod and your star, they comfort me. Can I encourage you? 
if you're trapped by fear, don't do it alone. Find someone who will journey with you. Cry out to God like David. Find someone you trust who will journey with you. And I firmly believe that God is with us. He's with us in our cave, that dark, cold, lonely cave. Your cave of fear. Knowing Jesus means that the Spirit of God is deposited in our hearts as a promise for us all to come. He is there with us when we walk through those darkest valleys. We can't flee from him. His presence, we cannot escape him. David knew it was impossible to escape the presence of God. Who's, who loves us so much that he gave his only son to rescue us. Can I encourage you to reach out if you are struggling with mental health, with fear? Reach out to God first of all. Then reach out to a friend who loves you, who wants the best for you. For me this week, having friends who I can reach out to was life, life saving and life changing. It brought me out of that pain. It's okay not to be okay. What's not okay is when we're left alone. That's not okay. When we're left to suffer. You know, join a small group. That would be the best thing you could ever do, where you're supported. If you don't want to join a small group, find someone who will journey with you. You don't have to do this alone. First of prayer, go for, go for personal prayer on Thursday. Reach out for God. You know, our family, we have got a close family member. And they are in this cave of despair. Traps full of addiction. Surrounded by darkness, trapped by fear, rejecting our help. As a family, we are powerless. We are fearful. We are broken. All we have is Jesus. But that's good, isn't it? We have Jesus. You know, we have hope for this family member. We, like David, we fall to our knees. Like God, like Jesus in that garden. We cry out for that family member. We cry out that they will be healed and saved. Jesus said never. Jesus never said don't worry because there's nothing to worry about. He said don't worry in spite of the fact that there's so much to worry about. Many times Jesus says to his followers, do not be afraid, do not worry. You know, the answer to fear and worry is to trust, put it on, and is to obey and step out. It's okay to cry out to God. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay for you, it's not okay for you to do it on your own. I'm passionate about this because my cousin, he took his own life. For him, he had no one to reach out to. We don't know. We don't know why he took his own life. But that breaks my heart, knowing that someone could reach that point. Questions like, why? Why? Reach out. Find a Christian brother or sister who will support you. Reach out to God. Put on your boots and trust God. Do it with you. But don't do it alone. Do it with God. Do it with the support of friends and family who will walk with you on this journey. Amen. Thank you, Father.
PM band could just play quite a few And then we could just reflect on what Carl was just saying and if anything has touched you as well. I mean, there might be some things there that Farm is saying. Um, <clears throat> you might want to close your eyes and just hold your hands in front of you while I read some things out while I make some notes when Farm is speaking. In particular, family member in addiction. I think maybe some of us all have that. Fear, loneliness, not feeling good enough. And in Psalm 142, set me free from my prison. Fear, maybe success taking over in your life. And maybe winning people for God. You're doing this, but you're feeling very lonely within it. And Jesus simply said, close the door and pray to your Father in heaven who hears you. So Lord, I just thank you for this time. As we reflect on we know that you are the perfect one who can heal us. And would you touch our hearts now, Lord? Amen. You want to all stand for this time of worship?
So we've got 24-7 prayer coming up on Saturday 24th of April and again on the 22nd of May, the Pentecost. And it's all going to be on the website. And I've created a little button on the website that says this week. So you click into that, it's got everything happening this week, hopefully. So yeah, that's good. Um, and finally, can we have Amy up? It's a very exciting week. Amy's been working so hard behind the scenes to get the shop and the cafe and everything ready, and she's going to have to catch one. Yeah, come again. Oh, wow. So, Lord Jesus, we just uh, we thank you for Amy. Lord Jesus, we thank you for bringing us, bringing her to us and her family. And Lord, we just pray, uh, Lord, for your provision. Lord, on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, Lord, we pray for a sense of your excitement, Lord, as people come in and um, encounter you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we pray for protection for Amy and her husband. Lord, bless her. Lord, fill her with encouragement and hope, Lord Jesus. You are going to do some incredible things in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen.
Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for your great love and mercy over our lives. Help us this week to seek your face more and more. Help us be slow to speak and quick to listen. Let patience be our friend this week, Lord, as more businesses start to open and we still see more and more people around us. Let us be wise in all our decisions and not to rush ahead. Finally, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Have a great week, guys.